A histogram allows the visualization of the distribution of a data set. Given the data set, the bin size is determined and the frequency of data values falling into each bin is counted. A plot is created with the horizontal axis representing the bin ranges and the vertical axis representing the frequency or count of the data elements falling into each of the bins. In this example, the input data consists of a set of test scores out of 30. Each bin size is one. Each bar in the chart represents how many test scores were scored for the value the bin represents. In this case, the bin represents a single value. For example, 14 students scored 27 out of 30. This follow-on example uses the same data, but this time we have used a bin size of two. Each bar represents how many test scores were scored for the two values in the bin. For example, 17 students scored either 27 or 28 out of 30. To write code to create a histogram, follow these steps. Step one, determine the number of bins to be used for the input data, how to compute the bin boundaries for the data, and therefore how to map any given data value to a bin. The latter could be a function that returns a bin number given a data value as input. Step two, allocate the size of the frequency table based upon the number of bins. Initialize the frequency table to be zero for each bin, ready for counting the data elements in step three. Step three, loop through every data element, mapping the element to a bin and increasing the count of that bin. Step four, render the histogram using the frequency table from step three as the input data to be rendered. The y-axis is the count of each bin. The x-axis will be determined by the bin boundaries. For image histograms, the input data comes from the pixel intensity values of the image. If we zoom in, we can see the individual pixels. Each of these pixels had a, has a red, green and blue value. So for example, if we go to one of the darker areas, then we can see that the red, green and blue values at the top right are all quite low. If we zoom out, and go to one of the brighter areas, then we can see these are all quite high values indicating white. And if we go for the blue sky, then we see that each of these pixels has a higher blue than a red and green component. Typically, an image has three channels of color intensities, red, green, and blue. In the common 24-bit format, there are eight bits per channel, giving possible values for each color channel of zero to 255. An RGB value could be converted to a brightness intensity value I by combining the three color channels. For an example, an equally weighted combination could yield I, the intensity is equal to the red, green and blue values added together and divided by three. Given a standard 24-bit color image, we could obtain the intensity for each pixel and create a histogram of all of those intensities. So this dialog box shows the intensity levels of this image and they're represented using the histogram that we can see here. So each of the bins along the bottom will have a bin size of one going from zero to 255. And then the height of each of these bars represents the count of the number of pixels that have that particular intensity level. If we click on the drop down, we also see that there are histograms for the red, green, and blue components of each of the pixels in the image. So to create the other histograms, we just take all the red components of each of the pixels and treat it as a data set, and then apply the histogram function to that data set. And then the same also to produce the green and the blue histograms. To create those histograms, we need to decide on the bin size and then count the frequency of data values falling into each bin. 
Naturally, with 256 possible values, a bin size of one could be chosen. So that simplifies step one because the number of bins is 256 and the mapping of each data value to bin is simply the data value itself. For step three, the frequency of values for each bin will be computed by iterating over all the input values, which is to say that we iterate over all of the pixels, get their red, green and blue values, compute the intensity and update the four RGB and intensity histograms. Now we will look at various options and see how they impact the histogram. So first of all, if we remind ourselves what the histogram looks like for this image. And the first thing we will do is we will make this image much dimmer. So if we adjust the brightness of the image and now go back to the histogram, we can see that there are much lower color pixels in the image and therefore the histogram contains much higher values to the left hand side and fewer brighter pixels over this side. Now I'm going to adjust the contrast of the image. I have to do this in a few stages. So I'm going to reduce the contrast and then reduce the contrast again and also a third time. So it's greatly reduced contrast in the image and we can see now that the histogram has become compressed. So it's been squashed down so there are a lot more values in the center of the histogram. Now let's try and recover the original image using histogram equalization. So the equalize option here. And we can see that we've gone back to what looks to be the original color image. But if we check the histogram, we can see there are fewer individual colors in this image, but they are spread out um, on the original shape of the histogram that we saw at the start. And now I'm going to reduce the colors using the posterize function. So here there are four different reds, four different greens and four different blues in the image. And we can see these very distinct contours where there was originally smooth color. So these are known as MAC bands. As I increase the number of colors that are available in red, green and blue, you can see that the image slowly improves. So let's go up to about 20, 28 in this case. You can still see the MAC bands in the sky. And let's just say OK to this and have a look at the histogram. So now you can see there are 20 individual colors in each of red, green and blue distributed throughout the whole of the 0 to 255 color space. And now let's revert back to the original image. You could actually see very little difference when I revert it back to the image, but now you can see the sky is much smoother. We've removed the MAC bands. To write code for creating histograms from images, for step one, the bin size is one. Therefore, the bin to update for an input data value is the red, green or blue data value itself, or the intensity that's being calculated from those red, green and blue values. Therefore, for step two, the size of each array is 256. And to create the histogram in step three, we iterate through every pixel and obtain its red, green and blue values. We can also create an overall intensity for that pixel by adding them together and dividing by three. We use these values to update the bins in each of the red, green and blue and intensity frequency arrays. Finally, the arrays can be visualized as histograms. Note, a common mistake I've seen from students coding image histograms is to compute the red, green and blue histograms first, then to loop through the 256 histogram entries, adding each bin together and dividing by three, and then using that value for the intensity histogram. This is an incorrect approach and does not yield a count of the intensities in an image. Volumetric data. 
3D volumetric data from scanners such as CT or MRI have a single data value at each 3D position. They are sometimes regarded as a stack of 2D images where each image has a single data value at each pixel position. These values may be, for example, Hounsfield units, as on a CT scanner, which can be negative for objects that attenuate X-ray radiation less than water. The scans usually contain values from a 12-bit scanner, and therefore there are up to 4,096 different values. These are usually stored as 16-bit integers, which is the short int data type. We can create a histogram for volumetric data using the same steps as before. Step one, it is still reasonable to use a bin size of one, where there are up to 4,096 data values. Since input data contains negative values, we must ensure to create a function that maps any data value to a positive bin value. Find the minimum of all of the input data and call this min. Find the maximum of the input data and call this max. There will be max minus min plus one bins in the histogram, Create and initialize this histogram to zero, which will hold the count of each bin. Loop through each data value. Its bin index is found by subtracting min from the data value and then increase the count of that bin. Okay, we will now take a look at the process of histogram equalization in another video.